Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. These are techniques that are so simple and sensible, your miners have practically built them themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv and welcome to the Kit Hoarder Stash. Today, I've got one that I'm pretty excited about because it's part of my Pacific War collection and that is the M3 75mm gun mo motor, motor, motor boat, motor boat, gun, motor, carriage. Thank you. It's a smart kit by Dragon in 135th scale. Well, let's take a look at this and see. So on the side of the box here, you've got a bunch of different um, marking and color schemes. And some of the features here uh, of the 75 millimeter gun. And on the back of the box, you've got some of the other features that are in this particular kit. Ooh, ah. Now this is an expensive kit. Uh, Depending on whether it's currently in production or not, uh, will still depend on its price. But you're going to pay anywhere between $75 and $90, even upwards of $100 for this kit. It's it's just not cheap. And trying to find somebody with one used is very, very difficult. So, anyway, I get the bullet and I paid for it. And the instructions, as always with Dragon, you've got your parts, call outs, and certain parts that you won't be using okay a lot of people have problems with dragon instructions i really don't um we're going to start out with uh, building the engine and the uh, differentials the wheels the chassis and the color call outs there uh, more chassis, more chassis, putting on the tracks, building the uh, building the body, building the gun, and putting everything uh, putting everything together. And then finally, and that uh, takes 14 steps, and then you get to the paint and the marking guide which is really nice. You've got several different different options. You've got North Africa on here. You've got Saipan, which is Pacific, which is what I'll be doing. You've got Italy, um, Germany, all sorts of cool things. Now, one thing I want to mention, um, several people have asked, isn't this the same half track that they have in the movie um, Kelly's Heroes? And no, it's not. Uh, I want to say it's an M6. I could be wrong. Maybe M5. Sorry, I'm not the expert. But it's a um, International Harvester um, half track, made half track, in the movie Kelly's Heroes, which makes it the M5, I think. Anyway, it's got what they call a T19 or a T20 gun on it, which is a howitzer, like a 105 howitzer. So it's a completely different gun. Looks kind of similar to this. Uh, the one that's in the movie was sourced locally in uh, Yugoslavia, of course, after the war. That's where they got that Sherman with the big 90 on it, you know, and all that cool stuff. No, it was, uh, anyway, that's where they sourced all of the uh, uh, tanks for the movie, Kelly's Heroes. And the, um, the half-track, from what I understand, is they put whatever locally sourced gun they could on it. Uh, so it's, you know, technically looks like the T-19. Different, different thing altogether. A howitzer versus this is a, a definitely an anti-tank. So we'll get into a little bit more of that here in a minute. Um, the decals just look amazing. There's some photo etch and some very finely molded parts for the uh, wheels. Some chain and some rope and here's your clear parts. <clears throat> I 
Ooh, everything is still in the bags. So we are going to remedy that right now. And get it out of the bags. So first off, I have uh, sprue R. R. Yeah, it's a pirate sprue. Uh, we have some jerry cans. We have... Um, Sorry, the shells, the munitions for the for the gun. Uh, some of the interior parts, and it's very unique. The interior of this is very unique from other um, other half tracks. But there's the the main interior part. I'm not going to take this out right now. M2 M2 A1. Oh yeah, this is your your um, front radiator grill. Um, guard, shutters, whatever you want to call them. I'm not the expert on naming parts, so I apologize if I call something by the wrong part name. Ah, okay, this is a 75 millimeter GMC and 135th scale. So the gun that they put on this is a, like an 1898. 1898 vintage 75 millimeter gun and I believe it was a French gun the reason was economy okay it wasn't the best gun they they could field but it was a good gun that they could field um, and it would it would work I mean it had lots of parts it was reliable so it was definitely something that they could um, put on this but it certainly wasn't the best gun available but it was definitely the most practical. So that's one reason why it had this, this on it. Anti-tank doctrine, you know, pre-war, early war. You know, I guess they felt the half track was, was a suitable enough platform. You could drive it around, you could uh, set up this gun and shoot at other tanks and take them out. Um, you know, the lighter armored German tanks early in the war. Um, Japanese tanks, very lightly armored. So, you know, uh, I still like using a tank chassis for anti-tank work. But, you know, hey, back then, this is what they decided to go with early on in the war. So, um, my dad was in an anti-tank platoon uh, with the 25th Division in... Um, in the Pacific and their job was to use a recoilless rifle so don't know exactly how these were deployed necessarily in the Pacific versus the um, use of the recoilless rifle team um, I just know that the Japanese tanks weren't as heavy armored they um, were definitely very mobile they were definitely lethal but the anti-tank platoon had more to do, uh, you know, bunker busting, uh, machine gun nests, you know, things like that as well. So, and the terrain definitely wasn't as conducive for tanks in uh, in the Pacific. They, so, anyway, mobility, whatnot. Here is the, appears to be the, the cab and the gun shield for the 75. interesting during the same time they also had the three inch gun the 76 that wound up on the uh, Sherman's eventually and, and the Hellcat and other tanks they had that available to them but uh, they chose to go with this uh, this old 75 very interesting this is sprue B looks like you have the interior of the cab um, some of the cab sides and I don't know if these are the ones that are used or the other ones are used Steering wheel, Pioneer tools, um, you know, different parts of the half track. So a very detailed half track here. Definitely a detailed model. This is going to be a beautiful build. Okay, here's your chassis and part of the engine. Um, more differential and chassis detail parts. Very well molded. You know, no flash and, and uh, sink marks or anything like that. Very, very well. You know, typical for what I am used to from Dragon. 
So yeah, you're paying a lot of money, well, a lot of money. You know, if these kits were about $30 cheaper, I'd be a whole lot happier. Um, I'd be okay with it. I just think they're way overpriced. They're good. I just think they're overpriced. So anyway, here's your side racks with your uh, the mine, uh, mines in them. Uh, skate rail for the 50. Looks like uh, some seats, some parts for the mirror, headlight parts, the front roller, and some other parts I just don't quite identify with. So, you get a figure, a driver figure. I'm not going to take him out, but yeah, you get a figure. And finally, oh, let's check this out. Finally, we've got the last of the sprues here. This is Sprue D. Ooh. Okay, two identical sprues, so we'll just look at one of them. And this has your front tires with a little bit of weight on it. Has your, uh, your tracks. Now, your tracks on this are hard plastic. One piece. Interesting. Um, and then more of your rear suspension parts. And then one last thing, you get this, I guess it shows you how to build the driver and, and where to put him in the in the interior. So there you go. Well, that's it. That's uh, that's all there is to this. And I'm looking forward to getting this built. This would be a great addition to my Pacific War collection, but it would be a good addition to whatever, you know, if you've got Italy, you know, Europe, whatever. This would be a great addition. Looks like a great kit. I can't wait to get working on it. So thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you again next week.